Welcome to Fresh Off the Boat. Uh, today, I'm delighted to be interviewing Vikramjit Kukreja, a student I've known for several years now. He's also from my paternal and maternal hometown, Amritsar. So this edition makes it even more special. Uh, how was it like, Vikram, for you to uh, move from Amritsar, which is a small town in uh, Punjab, a small city rather, and find your way to Berkeley and the Bay Area and all the hustle and all the action and all the activism there. How was it like settling in at UC Berkeley? Um, it was a culture shock and it was also like quite um, a shock in terms of pace because everybody would really had to get things done as opposed to in Amritsar where you're very relaxed and very chill the entire time. And you're like, oh, you just go with the flow. But in Berkeley, everybody's talking of deck. They want to talk. Uh, what's going to happen next in every circle of life or in or in every industry so that was um something i had to acclimatize to uh considering that like i still had internet and everything it was uh still somewhat expected from the bay area so i think i got into that zone really quickly like Within a couple of months, I would say. How were the resources like during orientation week and you know things that you would say you would go to for support? You know, being a large school, very often students complain that you're on your own, you figure things out. Uh, but how was it for you? I think we discussed it before I actually chose Berkeley. You said like you had to be really proactive. And I did feel that like I had to go out of my way to actually take advantage of the enormous amount of resources that Berkeley has to offer. But uh, coming from a really small high school, I it, it took me a, uh, like maybe a semester or two to really adjust into really asking for help. Uh, and during orientation, uh, I've heard it's better now, but during uh, my freshman year, it was kind of like just one day of, oh, these are the buildings. Oh, this is what we do. Now go fend for yourself. So uh, now it's a week long process. So I'm happy that they've changed that. Great. What about academics though? Settling in, in terms of uh, making the right choices, knowing where to get your placements or not get your classes placed out. Uh, was there any support? And then what did you do eventually? Uh, you know, I know you've graduated with a EECS major, which is very coveted. Many students we work with look up to kids who have made it to that uh, electrical engineering and computer science major. So yeah, all of that, how does it pan out? What are the requirements? Who's, who helps you with what? Mm, so I think I was very lucky um, because I already knew some, uh, someone who had been through the Berkeley system. You know her as well, Dipin. So she really like basically told me to not take things like to first get rid of that stereotype that you have that Americans are dumb or like they don't have as much of an academic rigor in high school. So get rid of that stereotype and really uh, realize how rigorous classes are gonna be. So my first semester, even though I was close to the unit cap, which was uh, like 20 units a semester, I was like, I think 18 or 19, I was still taking rather like simpler classes than maybe some of my peers were taking. So it was an easy ramp up. And uh, because Berkeley is a huge school, it's really hard to get into some of the classes. So you really have to wake up on time for your deadline and enroll in all those classes. I wish that process would really change. Right. And uh, about walking like the path of electrical engineering, what were the roadblocks uh, signing up for classes of finding you know, people to support you, going to office hours, uh, and then graduating uh, on time. <laughs> what are the challenges? Um, so for EEC specifically, uh, I came in as uh, an intended electrical engineering major. So it was like in my first two semesters, I realized that this is not what I wanted to do. And I like pivoted quickly towards CS entirely. So I concentrated in CS. So uh, a huge uh, part of that was like talking to uh, different students who were in a similar situation as I was. And I think that's one of the advantages that comes uh, with 
being in a big school, you have such a huge pool of people who've been through all sorts of situations that you can actually, if you choose to reach out to them, they'll really help. Uh, as as for classes, I think if you're, I, I know there's a difference if you come in as intended CS, which is in the Letters and Sciences school, uh, you do have a hard time getting into classes. But if you're an EEC student and you want to get into EEC classes, you have like a particular number of seats that are booked out for you. So it's not that much of a challenge. Getting into a class offered by a different department is rather hard though. Right, so which are the classes in computer science which really challenged you and also gave you sort of future direction in terms of your internships or things that you did on campus for research and then finally your job? So uh, as most people do nowadays, I concentrated in machine learning. So most of my classes were probability, optimization and like MLAI related. And I think those were the classes I enjoyed the most except uh, probability, I would say that was the hardest class I ever took. And uh, it was a really small class uh, with really brilliant people as all classes are. Uh, so I was, I constantly felt that I had to go to office hours, which I hadn't for a long time in my life. Like I was, I didn't consider office hours to be that important until I took this class where I really had to go out of my way to uh, really understand some concepts that weren't as clear in the lectures because once you're in a group full of really brilliant students, uh, the professor like tends to be like, oh, let's just go past this, you know this, you know that. Uh, as for the other classes, uh, like my intro to machine learning course was uh, taught by this brilliant professor who uh, is actually researching geometry of something in geometries. I'm not entirely sure what his research thing is. So he had a really interesting perspective on machine learning. And then like just uh, looking at the concepts from his uh, point of view was really interesting to me. I'm not sure if I answered your question. I can't. Yeah, like, no, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I think very well, very well said. I think we've got a fairly good idea of how the EECS major works and you know your path. Uh, but tell me something. There are obviously uh, many other courses and areas of uh, knowledge being sort of distributed through fantastic professors at Berkeley. Uh, which was your non-STEM class which you really uh, enjoyed and look up to the professor and what you learned? Um, hmm, Non-STEM. I um, really enjoyed my South Asian uh, sort of religion in, uh, in modern India course. Uh, so the professor was Indian uh, and she really uh, focused on giving the Indian perspective on things. So uh, a lot of times, I've, I've obviously not taken a lot of South Asian courses here, but like a lot of times I've heard people say that when uh, sort of a person from, uh, a person who's not from the subcontinent is teaching the course, they have like a very different outsider perspective of it. So I think, getting that insider perspective and also like some sort of a lens on, uh, from the outside on religions in modern India really opened up my eyes. So it's a very important and, topic given, you know, polarization in the world and in mm -hmm. uh, the subcontinent. Uh, what is it that you feel you learned from that class? Oh, so much. Uh, I did not really know how Hinduism came about and how it was a British concept and like, uh, and how really the Hindu Muslim divide or stuff like that really originated. So just having that perspective, I think really uh, brings in an ap appreciation of what India is today and really shows what it should be as well. Great. Uh, so kind of it took you to go half the way across the world to have pride in <laughs> your character. <laughs> religious <laughs> legacy or whatever so uh, amazing i think uh, that's what universities are for it could be anywhere uh, back home or anywhere else and of course in india now there are some new universities which are kind of uh, bridging those boundaries getting fantastic professors uh, and working in india with technology all of this is absolutely possible uh, possible there's plaksha the shoka kriya these are three names i can think of 
what do you think as a uh, future of education should be you know because you've done obviously a stem major and now you've appreciated liberal arts and social sciences as well uh, where do you see the world of higher ed moving given there's so much disruption but also opportunity given that hmm. colleges are shut and many other things might impact through because of social distancing i've actually been thinking about this a lot myself um, me and a couple of friends we always like think about new ideas and uh, this is definitely uh, one of the things that we've discussed i think to me like a shift to a newer way of learning online is really important because like considering the disruption covid-19 caused it's it might happen over and over again and i think universities and higher education institutions will want to become more resilient to these sort of disruptions and like in my experience like anything that's online is not really uh, a good alternative to an in person class so like getting that balance right is i think key uh, okay. for anything that is promising makes sense i'm going to sort of link to uh, pre professional training and then your current job at microsoft azure uh what is it obviously you did machine learning ai so there's a lot of data science and cloud computing requires that background uh but what is it that you actually do in your day to day work at microsoft so um i am a software engineer so a lot of it is basically maintaining uh a little background actually i work on a new project that's uh not out yet uh, it's called azure auto ml so uh it's still very startup y it's a really small team so a lot of what we do as a team is like maintain and stabilize our software so we can actually release in the future so uh my day to day would be more like oh some something's broken fix it so, oh this another thing's broken fix it so it's not really making something out of the ordinary right now it's like really stabilizing it because i just joined recently right but are you applying what you learned in in college in some sense or uh, not all of it? <laughs> i think this is a uh, is th this is a larger trend that i've noticed uh like even with my uh, colleagues and all they said that like college re really doesn't teach you anything to apply, uh, like for the job but it teaches you how to learn and also gives you the basics i think so like a lot of what i'm doing right now i learned on the job or during my internships and um but the mindset that my college gave me is really key here which is why like i'm able to ramp up quickly or you know and uh, another thing that <laughs> college really helped me was how i got this job like how many connections i made and how uh, like those connections turned out to be like good leads and so on and so forth Great. So you don't have to depend on career services, the office, but it's more to do with the events and alumni connections. Yes, absolutely. Super. So, uh, so what message would you have for people who've lost their internships this year? You've just kind of been lucky by just say a year or so, or you know, and uh, absolutely, yeah. What what would you think of uh, dealing with disappointment uh, that people have all across, not just even college students, but even high schoolers who were planning to go to college? uh what message i would have for them it's actually like i was um in the same in a similar situation uh where like i almost had a job and then i lost it but uh it it's really disappointing but like you will get over it you're still super young at least for those in high school there's so much to do now and uh like i think the real problem is taking yourself too seriously which really if something's trivial it hits harder than it should so like i would say just don't take yourself too seriously just keep on working and there are going to be disappointments just get over them and continue right that's all i can say sure so now i'm going to change the pace of this conversation have some rapid fire questions just to get to know you ikram mm -hmm. uh number one like if you were to imagine your life post covid if tomorrow everything becomes okay what are the two or three things that you really crave to do <laughs> uh two or three things actually meet people 
<laughs> it's been a while. I'll actually meet my team. It's, I've been working for like maybe five months now, and I, I've barely seen them. So it's really hard to collaborate. Uh, that's a nerd answer, but uh, I really want to meet my team now. And I go to a restaurant. It's, I just have those simple things in life that I really want right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. But what are the on the flip side? What have you discovered about yourself as a reflection? Sort of, you know, so much time to reflect on things. Um, I've realized that I get easily bored, and I do need that, like, constant interactions with different things to really keep myself engaged. So what I'm uh, really trying to do now is like get myself into reading. I literally baked the cake a couple of minutes ago. So yeah, just those things, discovering what I like, what I don't like. I think it's a good time to learn about yourself. Great. And if you were to uh, identify three adjectives that this or capture your strengths, what would they be? Uh, mm. <sighs> it's a tough question. Uh, oh my god. Let's move on to the next question. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> you can go back to it. You already mentioned a few things, like learning new things and adapting, and <laughs> also being a team player. So yeah, I'm, 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 I've already got my answers. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad. <laughs> super. So uh, if you were to uh, look back at non-academic, non-pre-professional, like your journey so far, what are the things that Berkeley helped you sort of do what clubs organizations which are not focused on stem could be entrepreneurship though because the bay area yeah. obviously puts that up so uh, uh what would you credit the berkeley experience for so i don't know if you remember from our conversations in high school when i was in high school um i was really into cars so i got in, involved into uc berkeley formula ICE, where we built formula style cars and raced them it's a nationwide competition that we go to. And then, yeah, it's uh, basically a Formula One-esque sort of competition. So I got involved in that. I was a part of Cal Badminton. Uh, so I really realized that I wasn't as good as I, at it as I thought I was. And then I was a part of the newspaper, The Daily Californian. And uh, being Berkeley and being in the Bay Area, there are a lot of entrepreneurship courses slash opportunities that you have. So one thing that I participated in was a Collider Cup uh, where like you take the entire semester and you come up with um, a, a business idea and you pitch it to investors. Uh, so being a part of that team and being a part of that uh, entire process, I think was really helpful and is very Berkeley specific. Now questions about applying to Berkeley or highly selective colleges. What do you think people who are considering applying high schoolers, they should know about Berkeley because they need to establish that fit. Uh, what are the few things you wished you knew and you could have sort of prepared um, yourself better and also reflected that in your application better? Um, you're breaking up a little, but I think I got the question. I would say like first listen to you <laughs> because <laughs> I really know about it. <laughs> But uh, coming, you have to realize that Berkeley is a huge school and it's going to be tough and there's going to be a lot of competition. So if you're someone who, uh, someone who's like me and who's been like sort of used to uh, some handholding into like getting into like the zone of studying or academic handholding, then Berkeley might not be the place for you. But even if you need that, you will find people to help you with it. But you have to be proactive. And what about stuff that you have to do for the application? Uh, what is hyped up too much? What really you think worked for you or other people you know? So I think uh, I, this might be very specific to me as well. I think standardized testing is hyped up too much. Berkeley is a, a obviously very academic focus, but they, like from what I saw that uh, people who were successful in Berkeley as well might not have had the highest standardized test scores. Uh, so like if, if you probably don't even have the highest scores that you think you need for Berkeley, you might be fine here as well. If that makes sense. Yeah, sure. 
Fine. So let's uh, kind of uh, end with uh, something that you would want to uh, share about you, which not many people know. Uh, and in the last four or five years, what are the mistakes, failures, learnings from those, or even embarrassing moments of <laughs> high school and college <laughs> that <laughs> made you reflect on who you are and what you can be? Um, I think I know exactly what I want to talk about here. Uh, I think I've said it before already, but uh, coming from a small town, I thought like, oh, I'm so great. I'm so smart. I'm going to Berkeley. And like this entire process of me going to four years of college, I went from, oh, I know a lot to, oh, I don't know as, as much to like, I don't know anything. And so like a good lesson that I had from Berkeley was to not take myself too seriously and to like take every opportunity that I have to learn rather than being like, okay, you know, I know this, like just have an open mind, uh, really focus on what you can get out of your res uh, the resources of people around you rather than showing off what you might be or what you might know. If, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for such a honest and genuine response. Uh, and it was uh, delightful to just reconnect with you and looking forward to inviting you to our panels in the future, not just STEM related, but also uh, life advice or anything else that you would want to share. Uh, so thank you again, Vikram, and looking forward to uh, staying in touch. Yeah, thanks for having me. Be safe and uh, all the success to you in the future. See ya. <laughs>